Beloved, I offer you grace and peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and welcome to this time of worship. Today we are gathered by the God who created us all in love and in the divine image. Today we are gathered by the God who calls us all to unity, to reconciliation. Today we are gathered in person and we are gathered virtually and we are gathered to worship because God is faithful, because God promises to walk with us wherever we are. It is good for us to be gathered in worship on this day. It is good for us to be sent into God's world as ambassadors for Christ. That work begins in prayer, and this congregation has centered itself in prayer this week, calling on God for hope and healing. You can continue to find resources and videos to guide you in prayers for this time at secondchurch.org praying. We continue to be a community of faith, united in our call to serve and grow together, and so you can also find opportunities on our website to engage the life of this church. You will find growth opportunities at the event tabs, and you will find a myriad of ways to partner with our neighbors in service at the serve tab. No matter how you connect to second, we pray that you will find God's presence active and alive as you do. A brief update in this season of commitment and goal setting for 2021. Thus far, we have received 485 pledges toward our goal of 800. More than half of those pledges have committed to an increase over last year, which is a wonderful testament for which we give thanks. If you have not yet made your commitment, please visit secondchurch.org give to set your goal this week and help us continue the vital ministry of this church in new ways in the year ahead. Finally, I want to take a moment of recognition on this Sunday before Veterans Day, which our nation observes this Wednesday. The day was first recognized as Armistice Day in 1919, one year after the signing of the peace that ended World War I at the 11th hour on the 11th day of the 11th month. When he proclaimed the very first observance of that day, President and Presbyterian Elder Woodrow Wilson said to a grieving nation, still suffering the loss of hundreds of thousands of its citizens, to us in America, the reflections of Armistice Day will be filled with solemn pride in the heroism of those who died in country's service, both because of the thing from which it has freed us and because of the opportunity it has given America to show her sympathy with peace and justice in the councils of all nations. In 1954, the change to Veterans Day reflected a desire to recognize all those who have served in any branch of the United States Armed Forces during peace or wartime. As we commemorate this day, we offer our gratitude for the service and sacrifice of all veterans and their families, and we continue to pray for peace, for safety and wholeness of all those in harm's way. Grounded in God's grace, let us turn our hearts and minds to worship the God of us all. <laughs> 